we're going to talk today, uh, my topic is, is quite simple. It's five rules to harness the body to heal. How many people know that the body wants to heal itself? Yeah. How many people believe it? How many, how many people sometimes don't believe their body wants to heal? Yeah. Some, sometimes. Some, sometimes, yeah. I'm gonna, what I'm not going to tell you about are exercises to do, supplements to take, um, practitioners to see. Everything that I'm going to tell you about has everything to do with your mindset, okay? We know that if we can actually make a difference in the mind, it can make a difference in the body. And so we're going to talk about the five rules. And if you honor these, uh, you'll achieve success in whatever area of your life, whether it's um, something as simple as uh, lower back pain, that we, we obviously see a lot, or it's a change in uh, it's how you're feeling mentally. Or uh, for some people I know have had uh, a cancer diagnosis that they're uh, recovering from. Um, apply these principles along with help along the way. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story. First, that's my, our son. And he's uh, 22 months now. And uh, we've got another one on the way. So when you, when you see, see my wife, you'll, you'll know that. <laughs> Okay, so four years ago, I had severe, and I don't, I've never told this to anybody before, I had severe lower back pain and leg pain uh, for, for years, for years. I could barely stand on my feet. I could barely stand on my feet, and this might come as a surprise to some of you here, and I had just taken over Dr. Stewart's practice, which had been around for 25 years. And and it's, it was a very uh, challenging, challenging time. I would see patients, um, and, and you know our, what our office setup's like. I would go see a patient, and then I'd go back to the office, and I would lay down. And then I'd get up, go see the next patient, and then lay down. And just taking over the practice after, uh, you know, this happened a month after, uh, I basically had a, a sense that, you know, of ownership, but also a sense of fear that I was going to let people down. And I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing, um, hoping that I was like the rest of the patients that I was serving, that their problems would just get better over time. right? Um, unfortunately, that wasn't the case, because I kept doing the same thing over and over again. And what, I, what, I really, uh, what really happened was I hit, I hit a point where I felt defeated, and I, and I, and I broke down. Uh, physically, mentally, my wife actually was doing her residency at the time on the island. She had to fly in the same day to, to be with me. And it was a very uh, trying and emotional um, time. And I remember seeing different chiropractors um, looking for answers. I saw a different physiotherapists. I saw a neurologist. I saw, uh, I saw a massage therapist. I had somebody tell me, well, maybe you'll just have to live with this. And uh, you know, I remember going for two different MRIs of my spine, and laying in that machine. You know, I can and I can relate to it. I can relate to it. If anybody's had that done before, um, how how stressful that situation is. You're waiting for a result that's going to change your outcome. Quite often, that doesn't happen, as you know, right? Um, and so, I got to the point where I ended up seeing a spinal surgeon. And we went down to, to a GF uh, Strong, saw the surgeon there. Of course, you know, having a wife as a medical doctor, you think it would help you get to see certain people. No, we don't actually get that privilege. So we're, I, feel, I feel the same, same ways as a lot of people do in this room. And basically, um, what, uh, what happened was I found out this other, this other surgeon was also a chiropractor. He used to be a chiropractor, and then he became a surgeon. So I had a lot of hope that he was going to help me or tell me what to do. Of course, I get to the room, no handshake, no hello or introduction. Uh, I just uh, sat there. He did his exam, very short, in and out, um, told me, OK, you're not a surgical candidate, but um, you know, if it gets worse, come see me, if it gets worse. And of course, I'm thinking, you know, I'm already at the breaking point, right? And, and I, I think a lot of you can relate to some of this. And so uh, out of all those experiences, I saw all these different practitioners. And the only thing that changed me was actually talking to another chiropractor 
who told me, you know what, uh, Dr. Alibi, this is, you're going to get through this. You're, you're going to get through this. And I remember thinking in my head, because I'm very practical, if you know me, and, um, well, how do, you, how do you know that? You, you're not even in the same city as me, you know? How can you say that? But deep down, I had a sense in my heart that, that, it, that it was, and, and she was the only person who said that. Of course, your family tells you what you want to hear, right? Your family tells you what you want to hear, but when you hear it from somebody else, it makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. And so that really um, shifted things for me. And so the rule number one is find somebody who's not your family member to spark some hope in you, to spark hope. Because that goes a long way, because that's a mindset change. That's a mindset change. OK, rule number two. When we talk about being around the right people, is to cut out the negativity. Uh, seek the challenge, not the fear, OK? What, what if I don't get better? What if I have to live with this, right? I can't do this. All those statements are very fear-based. And we need to change our mindset. We need to, we need to seek the challenge. And, and really cutting out the negativity means you're cutting out what you're saying to yourself, but you're also cutting out what other people are saying to you. I remember I had a family member. Well. Oh, that's just too bad, you know. I said, oh, I really hope that I get over this. Well, let's, they said, well, let's see, right? Like, let's see what happens. Well, that's not very encouraging, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, I chose not, not, to talk to, not, not to talk to them, right? You, you just don't spend time around those people, even if it's people you're around a lot. And quite often, uh, I hate to say this, it, it's, it's sometimes our family, right? <laughs> it's, it's sometimes it's our family. Um, and so you're really cutting out the negativity and seeking the challenge, not the fear. And so what I started doing was I started swimming. I started swimming and I'd get in the pool and I had um, a sense of, it was almost like a little bit of a dopamine hit, a happy hormone. Every time you do something that you knew was good for you because you did your best. And I did that for months and months. I did that for five days in a week and I did that for six months and it became a routine. And I kept doing that, and of course, over time, you get better. OK, so the problem that I had was not that I needed somebody fix me, was that I needed to help fix myself. OK? And that's when I started swimming. I got to a, I got to a point where the swimming was really helping me, but actually, has anybody found that you really enjoy something and it's a challenge, and then you become good at it, and then you become bored. And it doesn't challenge, yeah, you can relate, right? You become bored. And we love to be challenged. A lot of us thrive off of uncertainty, thrive off of challenges. And so um, really finding uh, that the fact that uncomfortable is your new friend, and you need to solve a problem. My problem was that I needed something different. So somebody told me, well, why don't you start biking? Why don't you get on a bike? And you might have heard this from me if you're a patient. I, I, I said, bike or, or walk. And, and, and really, you've heard me push you and challenge you. And, and so somebody, I said, well, I can't. You know, When I was first injured, I tried to get on a bike. I couldn't even sit on it for five minutes. I said, I can't bike. And so there was that little bug that came back. I can't do this. Right? And I completely shut down the thought of biking. It took me another probably three months before I even considered it. I said, well, why don't you get a bike and you can get a custom fit? So here I am riding on this bike that's really high up. And I'm, I think, well, you know, I should be able to do this. Right? I should be able to. Well, I started biking more. And it was uncomfortable. But that was my new uncomfortable. Okay. This one's really important, and it's called the 1% rule, and this is what I learned over time, is I was constantly solving problems, but I had to use the 1% rule. Is anyone familiar with this? A little bit? OK. It's, it's from uh, John Gordon. He's a, a bestseller author. It's 21 ways to be a great teammate. And he talks about being on a team. You have to give 1% more every day. 
you have to be willing to give 1% more every day because if you're not growing, what's happening? Yeah, we're dying, right? We, things are never static, we're always dynamic, right? And so giving 1% more every day means that you're actually doing your best. And what does doing your best mean? Pushing yourself, what else? Reaching your goals, yeah. Anybody else? What does doing your best mean? Striving to be the best. Yeah, yeah. Striving to be the best. Uh, John Wooden, who's a, a basketball coach, and he passed away at 99. He um, he made the, he made, he coined the term uh, success, which is it's peace of mind in knowing that you did your best and knowing that you did your best, so that you showed up every day, right? Um, there's, a, there's a few of you here that I know your story and the things that you've been challenged with, and um, I, I know Sue's back there, and, and she's overcome a lot recently, and, and, and just seeing you recently, saying that, you know what, I'm going in the pool, I'm swimming, and, and I know that she's gonna get over it because she's pushing herself every single day, okay? Crave the results so intensely that the work becomes irrelevant, right? You treat yourself like an athlete. You know, they practice and they practice and practice. When you, go to, when you watch a sporting event, what do you see on the sideline? You see the other players who aren't playing, the ones who are, who are on the bench, right? And then you see the ones who are out playing. What's the coach doing? He's pacing, yeah, he's pacing. And what is he saying? Push. Push, yeah, what else? You can do more. You can do more, yeah. Move, go, go pass the ball, go. go team go, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What is, it, what is it, one game, how is one game different to the next? Is he saying the same thing or is it different? Sometimes it's different, but usually it's the same. It's the same thing over and over again that he's telling the players, right? Why? Because those are the most important things. And so whatever you're doing, whether you're finding something that's comfortable for you right now, well, push yourself and do it over and over again and show up with the 1% rule. if the slide worked. There you go. <laughs> Rule number five, 90-day goals. Who here sets goals for themselves? Good. Good. What, what kind of goals do you set? Walk further. Yeah. Exercise a little bit longer. Yeah. Patty is a great example of uh, using the 1% rule, but also solving problems. Just the other day, we were talking about uh, transitioning from using a, a cane. Yeah. What's the next challenge? She's solving problems. Was, what did you do? Went out and got walking poles. Went out and got walking poles. Now can you walk longer? Yep. Faster? Yes. And, and can you challenge yourself more? Mm -hmm. You got it. So she solved the problem. Ni 90 day goals. 90 days. Create a goal. Okay. It's long enough that you can achieve it, but short enough that you can actually see the end result, okay? Instead of setting a goal in a week. Okay. It makes it a habit. It makes it a habit. After 30, 90 days. Yeah, how long does it take to make a habit? 90 days. 90 days? Yeah, hopefully less. <laughs> some are slower. Yeah, for some who are slower, yeah. I always want to end with this quote um, by John Wooden that I mentioned already. Uh, success is peace of mind in knowing you did your best. I really hope that everybody holds on to that fact because no matter where we are, there's a saying that in life, and, and, and while I'm, I'm younger than most people here, and I can tell that I'm not, I'm not the only person here who's, and this, what I've been through I think is nothing compared to what I know that others have been through here or are going through. Um, 
is that I think in life you're, you're either uh, you're going into a crisis that you don't realize you're in one or you're coming out of one. Okay. Thank you for your time. All right.